you go. There's your special 4th of July intro. Happy birthday, America, and many, many, and to many, many more. That said, my presence to the United States of America as a whole is to continue trying to make this team not suck in every possible way. So on this special 4th of July episode that's only special because it's on the 4th of July and not because anything out of the ordinary is going to happen, let's get down to business. And of course by, you know, nothing out of the ordinary happening, I mean, <laughs> this team's still going to suck, let's be honest, because there is just nothing going my way when it comes to this series. It hasn't happened yet and I'm afraid it's never going to happen, but maybe, just maybe, today, today, today is the day that things turn around for me. Or maybe I'm losing my mind, it's false hope, and we'll be right back in this exact same spot. So the last uh, last couple of episodes have been interesting, obviously. Uh, this team has changed quite drastically. <laughs> I think that's a little bit of an understatement. Uh, Timmons is now our starting goaltender moving forward, which, yeah, not... Overly sold on him, of course. Former 11th overall selection. The numbers at the NHL level for his rookie season, not good, to say the least. But maybe, just maybe, again, here's a little bit more of that, uh, of that false hope and optimism. Maybe, just maybe, things can work out for us. Now, I don't think the 85% trick is going to work here. That said, I'm still going to try. Just to save a little bit of money here and there. Uh, Wolf, you can also come back. There's a good chance that you're going to be our backup goaltender next season. And Bilesma is probably hot garbage who's never going to get any better. But I'll still bring him back for next year just in case there's a little bit of improvement. He and Gibson uh, can be the one-two punch. Although I kind of want Gibson to be the starter in the AHL. He might not be that good, though. It might be worth trading him and flipping him. I don't know. That's That's the theme of all this, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know. <laughs> I really don't. We are going to head, uh, going to go ahead and sign Wayne Blunden, the third overall pick. Tried to hold off on that burp, couldn't do it. I'm sorry. Things happen. Uh, Valisi, Valesi, I'm going to call you Valisi. Let's go ahead and sign you as well. Chip Chera, we will hold off on. I want to get every prospect and key player signed before we do anything else. Then again, I don't know if Joel Farabee's a key player. Uh, but we are still going to look to bring him back on a somewhat cheap deal to at least flip him. Rintoul. Yeah, we can bring you back for that price. It's fine. Spinner. Spinner. We'll probably... Yeah, we're going to let him go to free agency, aren't we? Kaliev needs to sign. I know there's a really good chance of him being on our fourth line, maybe even our third line in this upcoming season. Uh, Adam Ernie and Miles Wood will be on their way out. We'll try to find replacements. Let's go ahead and sign Watt, maybe. Let's be honest, he's not hes not going to make it. He's not. I'm, I'm going to trade him. I'm sorry. I know people don't like the whole drafting and flipping process, but I feel as though it's necessary. That's a decent deal for Paling. Chase DeLeo, Andrew Kopp, you guys can go. Nolan Stevens and Larson, you guys can go. Of course, we just picked up Larson in one of the deals. Norris isn't looking for that bad of a contract. I'm not sold on Josh Norris as a bottom six player for us whatsoever, but it might be worth it. Shevel Dave will get a contract as well. <clears throat> so obviously, we have a lot to do in this offseason. I feel like that's an understatement. I mean, the draft was step one. Hopefully, we have some eligible players that we could sign. We should have plenty of money as Norris, Faraby. Uh, and I think, I didn't even see who that was, I think it was Timmons actually who rejected, which doesn't really surprise me. As I mentioned, I didn't expect the 85% trick to work. We have $24 million in salary, because obviously we shed a lot of that salary, and this team has changed a lot. Let's see if I can get about $3 million. again, just to save a tiny bit of money. Oh, Kevin Fitzgerald... Casey Fitzgerald, not Kevin Fitzgerald. I always make that you know, that mistake, just because... Of course, I added Casey Fitzgerald to the game, whereas Kevin Fitzgerald, who I believe was a Sharks prospect, he might still be, was already in the game. So I see C. Fitzgerald, I'm like, Kevin Fitzgerald. It's not. It's not. He's such a well-rounded player, but the point total just has not been there. 
It really hasn't. I suppose 28 points isn't terrible, but how much money are you looking for? Yeah, no. 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 You have fun going to the free agent list. Uh, Gildan and Samuelson. I will sign Max Gildan to that contract. That is fair, and I'm sure Samuelson... Yeah, I was going to say that. I'm sure Samuelson will sign for a decent number as well. Uh, fair be rejected. How much more are you looking for? What if I go up to 1.8 for two years? You know, 2 million at the most would be good for Farabee, just because of how unproven he is. And Josh Norris will go up to 1.5. Again, not sold on him. There is a decent chance he gets flipped out. Redmond as well. He's only 18. I might sign him. Maybe we'll try to rush him to the NHL level, even though there's no reason to do so. Heading into this next season, unless... Some craziness happens as Gildan rejects, Norris rejects, Samuelson, my god, really? At least Timmons accepted, so I got that slight discount. Going into this season, or this next season, I don't expect us to be a playoff team by any stretch of the imagination. Not a chance. Not going to happen. Uh, so Farabee, Gildan, Norris, that's it. Farabee. Farabee, how would you like one year at 1.8? Gildan, how would you like 1.1? That's still fair. And Norris, one year at 175. Should do it, hopefully. And then again, I don't think I'll rush Redmond. That was more of a joke, just because, again, we're not going to be a playoff team. All the moves, all the moves that we've made, all the moves that we didn't make, it's all led to this. Gildan accepts, Norris accepts. Farabee is still being a little bit of a jerk let's go with jerk let's keep it let's keep it pg today <laughs> we'll at least try to oh uh, why isn't Farabee the first guy listed okay oh no there he is way the hell back here for some reason we'll offer him a deal one year two million joel make it happen so that i can get to the start of free agency and maybe just maybe get a look at who we have available joel Farabee. Do you understand what's happening here? Like, you're not going to get that much money on the open market. There is no way someone's giving you more than two million bucks. I mean, maybe they will. Two, two, five. Any more than that, you can walk. You know what? You're not even worth it. Joel, you're out of here. You're not going to improve? Screw it. Leave. Go ahead and leave. See if I care. Kick rocks. Hit the bricks, Junior. Nobody wants you here. I wanted you here, but now I don't. Now I don't. I have no patience for these ungrateful players who want out of this team that appears to be cursed. Then again, they might be a part of the problem. So Joel Farabee's off this team, but my big question is who is on the free agent list? Festerling. Oh boy, who do you belong to? What? what? So wait, if they're an RFA, I can see their contract. Oh, I guess, yeah, because... Yeah, that's right. They would have a contract. He's Canadian, unfortunately. Ellie Tolvanen, Kopitar, Colin Miller, Brandon Carlo. Yeah, we're we're not really getting any, getting any help here, are we? We are not really getting any help here. Not surprising, but still equally soul crushing. I can't help but think this series is going to continue to drift more towards draft to glory style, where. We just, we need those players coming out of the draft to make this happen. So I need at least one more goaltender. And again, injuries aren't on in this series. Maybe one more goaltender if they're worth it. Maybe just a little bit of defensive help. Nothing too crazy. And then forward-wise, I mean, obviously there needs to be some assistance there. So we'll, we'll take a look. We'll take a look. There didn't appear to be anybody on the free agent list who was going to be a massive help to us, at least in terms of a multi-season game changer. But we'll see what we have here. So free agent-wise, there's nobody. There is nobody. Any prospects, though? Lemaire and LeClaire. That doesn't help me. McGratton as well. Unfortunately, no way to see his nationality. So from there, Caden Primo who is tech i think he's american born but technically canadian uh it's another foot situation which you know it does frustrate me a little bit well actually lee prospects has him listed as american he's 24 he might have an outside chance to get a little bit better did he play though oh, yep there's that split uh 
That split nationality. He played for Canada, didn't he? I was right, wasn't I? Elite prospects, you want to scroll down, please? Please? No, he played for the U.S. Uh, under-18 junior team. Perfect. So I could sign Caden Primo if I wanted to, which, all things considered, I probably should because I can't see how good Salcedo is, or Salcedo. Is there anybody half-decent here? Justice Anuen? Not quite. Gordon is computer-generated. Kincaid's computer-generated. Turakoff. Yeah, it's not looking too good. So with that said, actually, is there anybody? Yeah, anybody younger too, we wouldn't know. I'm going to sign Caden Primo for the hell of it. Hopefully we don't have any competition for him. I'll give him a max two-way deal. Max two-way deal, there we go. So we at least have an offer out for somebody. Defensively, do we have any prospects? <laughs> David Ferentz again, who wants $4.8 million. Like, there's no way. There's no way we can go in on that contract. If it drops off, I wouldn't be opposed to bringing him back, but like $4.8 million and you've never put up 20 points in three NHL seasons. You're insane. You are insane. I wish I knew of Bernard Parise. It was American C. Again, if they fix this for NHL 19, a series like this gets so much easier and perhaps, I mean, so just much more convenient for me. Uh, but for me only, Dante Fabro, I am 99% sure you are Canadian, and indeed you are. Uh, Mario Ferraro, though, or Ferrero, also, no, nah, it is Ferrar, and he's also Canadian. McAllister, we can't check. And then from there, we get certain familiar names, like Benton Moss, who I might as well bring back. Uh, Robin Salo will obviously uh, not be eligible. The Finn. Uh, Keandre Miller, also eligible. So Moss, Miller, Johnny Tyconic is there. He is Canadian, though, unfortunately. So we have Miller, we have Benton Moss, and they might be the only ones. DeRocher, yeah, because we're going to be getting into the younger players here that we have no way to check. So a couple of uh, low top four options, and then medium six. Do we have anybody who's like 24-ish? 25, 24 is kind of the magic number there where there might be an outside chance of a little bit more improvement. Luke Martin, who I'm sure is a Carolina prospect, also American. Don't really like his odds, though. Oh, my God, 70 offensive awareness. Get away from me. Let's look for 24-year-olds, I guess. Ray Lyon, former seventh-round pick. That's not going to help. Mosier. Yeah, I think with these 24-year-olds, it's just not going to happen. Uh, Nick Mellock is a low top six. Yeah, I don't think we want to look for low top six. Wow, J.D. Greenway did not develop whatsoever. Neither did Lindgren. A lot of these guys have dropped off tremendously. So, you know, I think we're good because the high top sevens and high AHL top six, just, they're not going to be these game changers that we need them to be. So, for just an outside chance of, hey, maybe you'll improve, let's look to bring in Benton Moss again, I'm quite sure. Uh, Keandre Miller, sign him up. And uh, that was it, wasn't it? It was just Moss and Miller. That was it, damn it. Yeah, because David Ferrance or Ferrance was there. That's right, Tyconic wasn't eligible. Yeah, we're, we're pretty much screwed, aren't we? The only other guy was uh, was Martin, who, oh boy, do I want to, you know what, I might as well just to have some depth options, we'll, we'll bring in Luke Martin as well, give him the max deal, hopefully he accepts. As far as any game changers here though, defensively, I mean, you know, it's, it's tough, Colin Miller's Canadian, Carlo is uh, also an option, isn't he? Yeah, Brandon Carlo's American. Don't know if we want to pay him $5.5 million. I mean, well-rounded, but you can tell by the attributes that he's not going to be a point-getter. I mean, we've had players uh, quite similar to him. So, you know, yeah, seven points. Seven points. He could kind of be... I mean, he has a right-handed shot, which could help. I know a lot of people are like, stop caring about handedness. And hey, whatever. I mean, I'd rather pay him 5.5 than pay Kevin Fitzgerald 4.3, you know? It's just whether or not Carlo is worth it. I mean, we can afford him, and it might be worth attempting to flip him at the very least, which 
is viewed as cheap in some circles, but considering we need all the goddamn help we can get, uh, I'm absolutely going to go for it. We're going to go 575. I could offer a little bit more. I won't go too cheap. I still need that contract to be tradable. So that settles that problem. Then we get to forwards. Now, Merkley, I am 90% sure, is Canadian. He is. Jankowski is also not eligible, and now you see our problem where there's just, there just isn't. <laughs> is there really anybody worth bringing in here? Tanner Pearson's Canadian, is he not? Yes, he is. JVR, I mean, I'd like to sign you, but you're 35 years old, and that's probably not for the best. He is only looking for a one-way deal. It's like, do we bring in 35-year-old James Van Riemsdyke? He put up 50 points last year, which is actually pretty good, but I'm afraid he'd just decline instantly. Uh, Tyler Johnson, Dessert Calls, there's just there's nobody that's going to be of massive help to us. So we'll look for prospects here, but for the most part, uh, our free agent period is over with. Uh, Joel Farabee hit the open market. I will send an offer out to him now that he's on the open market and probably won't get any contract offers. I wish I could see what Bennett and McKinley were. Uh, don't worry, when I'm forced to search the entire league again for trade options, I'm sure I'll see them again. It's probably not the last that you're hearing from them. Is that Cam Morrison? It is Cam Morrison. Cameron Morrison. Are you American? You are not. Well, Cam, it was nice talking to you. Bokefist, obviously not. Anderson Dolan is not, unfortunately. Yeah, he's not. Stortini, we can't check. Bertuzzi, we can't check. We can't check with any of these guys. Gopitar, Merkley. Oh, a lot of those guys. Ty Ronning. Insert joke here. <laughs> Insert joke here. Hudson Elniwick, who... It's weird. I'm not used to seeing his name two times in the same day. He just signed a... Uh, an AHL deal in real life with the Toronto Marlies. Because, yeah, some no one else signed him to an NHL deal. It's kind of weird. Tamela, Torniski's Canadian, I'm pretty sure. Kayumov. Uh, Cotton, but he's 26. He's not going to get any better. Shaw, Lachishan, Lachishan, whatever the hell, however the hell. Uh, Morgan Geeky, like, do we have any 24-year-olds who have a little bit of potential? Sutter and Elanen. Yeah, this is this is unfortunate. Fuller, we have no way to check. Seminoff, Zetterland, pretty much 24 years old is the cutoff for where for whether or not I'm going to be able to recognize them for the most part. And there's nobody, even at a medium nine. Oh, top nine, it's not really worth it. I think we're good <clears throat> with those six contracts. I think that's all we can really look to hand out. So let's see what happens in terms of who accepts and declines. And then once we get to the start of the preseason, of course, we'll have to send out some we'll have to send out some offers to fill out the roster. Uh, Caden Primo has signed. Luke Martin has signed. Benton Moss, Keandre Miller, Joel Farabee. Welcome back, buddy. Look who was right. Carlo has gone to the Red Wings. So there goes our big fish. Uh, we brought in a couple of quote-unquote prospects, let's be honest, they're more than likely just going to be uh, AHL uh, jersey fillers, for lack of a, for lack of a better uh, saying and phrase and terminology. They're not going to be impact players, more than likely, unless we, you know, end up getting rid of half of our team again, which could absolutely happen, uh, knowing how inconsistent this team has been there have been multiple seasons now where i've felt like oh yeah this, this is gonna be good we could be pretty good this season and then we weren't especially last year so for now we will prepare to head into this season with zero zero expectations we'll see maybe if we could have gotten some decent progress from some of our prospects and we'll take it from there. We might end, actually, at this point, we might end up doing some simming this episode. The offseason took a little bit longer than I would have expected, actually. So, I would imagine we're going to have some last second trades here. Well, let's see. So, Timmons is up to an 87. Primo's a 78. As is Wolf. Right. How did Wolf do in the AHL last year? 68 appearances, a 921 save percentage. That's very good, obviously. Uh, and then Primo, uh, pretty good. And Caden Primo 
Had a 902 in the NHL, but a 920 in the AHL the uh, the year before. I'm gonna trust our guy Wolf here. I think I'm gonna trust Wolf. Gibson's actually up to ooh, Gibson's up to a 75. I th yeah, he needs to be the starter. He absolutely needs to be the starter. I might get rid of Bilesma just to make sure, and he didn't improve at all. <sighs> right, 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 right. So we don't have to deal with injuries, but auto rotate is on. So it will more than likely always start the 78 overall goaltender. So either Primo or Wolf has to go. Gibson needs to be the starter. Bilesma has to go. So there's a decent chance I end up trading Wolf, although he still has potential. So maybe not. I think we're going to have to flip Caden Primo. I think we're going to go with Wolf. That way Gibson can be the starter in the AHL. Otherwise, we go Primo and then Wolf without Gibson being the starter, which I don't think is best for Gibson's development. So we already have moves to make goaltending-wise. Defensively, Reimer's up to an 87, which is crazy. Ernie's up to an 83. So really, we're not looking that bad defensively. I mean, between Gildan, Martin... And Samuelson, or we could even rush Wade Pellick. Or Pellich. I think it's Pellick. I'm going to go with Pellick. It might be Pellich. We have options there as well. So between between these guys here, so we have McAvoy, Wierenski, Reimer, Ernie, Quinn Hughes, Gildan, and Martin. You know, I mean, we would need an, another lefty. And Pellick could be the guy. I, don't, I know we don't necessarily need a lefty, okay? I'm just I'm saying... I mean, we could rush Pellick. I guess the big question here is what do we do with Quinn Hughes? Do we keep him and play him in a reduced role? Do we play Ernie in more of a reduced role because of the lack of offensive awareness? Is he going to be more of a Carlo type anyway? That seems to be the case with his lack of offensive ability. So we could go uh, McAvoy, Rorensky, Reimer, Hughes, Ernie, and Pellick, or an improvement on Pellick. We could even run Max Gildan in that spot, who is uh, quite well-rounded. What's Pellick looking like? Ah, uh, Pellick's relatively well-rounded, too. It's just whether or not we wanted to rush him to the NHL level. So, we're not looking too bad there. And then offensively, Parks is an 82. Hughes is obviously a 90. Uh, we have some decisions to make, of course. We have one player too many on the roster at the moment. Yandel and Hines are both 78s. So obviously, we don't have much depth. Stuart Yandel could be a decent addition. And then Hines has the crazy offensive awareness, but just a very weird attribute spread for him. So between Hines and Yandel, again, two players that we could rush to the NHL level, or we could just leave it be. Regardless... I know I have a trade to make relatively soon. I just don't want to get rid of Primo too early. Uh, but we need to bring in, actually, first and foremost, we need to bring in another backup goalie who is below a 75. So let me see if I can find a backup goalie. Wow, Festerling's still there, too. Can I find a backup goaltender below a 75? We'll look for a veteran, of course. That'll make it easy. Uh, Pavlik is a 61 and hasn't retired. Good Lord. Uh, Keith Kincaid who we have signed before. He's a 74. Of course, when we signed him, uh, you know, when we had him on this team in the first place, uh, he didn't do that well. But for an AHL guy at this point, it could work out. So I'm going to look to sign Keith Kincaid. We'll wait to hear back from him. And actually, you know what? Just in general, we can look at some other free agents here. Because we know we have the roster spots. Uh, let's look for forwards mainly. Defensively, we were looking okay. Um, don't want to just look for veterans to kind of make the team a little bit better. I think I do. I mean, because out of all these guys, it's like, okay, who's American, who's not? Do I really want to sit here and look? Uh, not really. Not really. You know what? Uh, jump cut as I send out a bunch of free agent offers. Oh, really, fool? All right, that's out of the way. And surprise, surprise, there's quite a few familiar names. Because, of course, there hasn't been anybody out of the draft that we could have looked to acquire. So, let's set up the scouting, wait for these guys to reply, 
and we'll take it from there. So we'll go two weeks in the U.S. to begin. As far as looking at the draft board, I might, but do I really want to get my hopes up? I don't know if I do. <laughs> I don't know if I do. Uh, Kincaid is accepted. Novak, Stevens, Ernie, Spinner, and Judd Peterson. The best name, Judd Peterson. He's a Sabres prospect who they might not ever sign, but his name is Judd, and for that reason, I am a fan. Uh, so we can now trade Bilesma. I'm going to wait to trade Caden Primo because there's really uh, no reason to do it this early. Uh, could get in trouble, of course, for flipping someone a bit too quickly. And, of course, at the end of this, we'll take a look at our draft pick situation. Uh, Redmond was up to a 76, by the way. Let's see. First and foremost, Bilesma. You are on your way out. And who else can I look to get rid of? Not Chip Chura. We'll keep him. Who do we have unsigned? Nobody there. And then forward-wise, uh, Percy and Watt. You know, they actually might make it. They've gone up in overall from the looks of it. They were lower 60s. You know what? I think I'm going to keep them now, actually. I'll give them a chance to develop. Huh. Well, that's nice, at least. That was an unexpected surprise. So with that... Let's just look to move this goaltender. Yeah, we don't even need to get anything back, really. Just who has the space? Toronto? Can't wait for Bilesma to eliminate us in the playoffs three years from now. Uh, Toronto, how would you like to give me a third round pick for this dude? Apparently not. How would you like to give me a fourth and a seventh for this dude? Because that seems like it's fair to me. How about just a fourth? I'll take it. We get a fourth round pick for a goaltender that we're not going to use. That works for me. So our goaltending is good. Uh, of course, without injuries. Again, all I have to do is trade Primo. I guess it's going to be Timmons and Wolf to start. And we'll have uh, Gibson and Kincaid. If Wolf struggles, odds are I'll drop him down to the AHL and we'll get somebody better if it turns out that we have a half-decent team. NHL-wise, again, defensively, I'm going to look here and just... By far the most well-rounded is Gildan. So I guess I'd leave that decision, or flat out will leave that decision up to you guys. Uh, do we leave the defense as is in terms of, you know, the top five? But who do we have on this team as well? Gildan? Or do we just give Pelic the opportunity now? Some prospects seem to do well in terms of rushing them to the NHL. Others, not so much. So it's one of those up-in-the-air kind of decisions where we really have to decide what we want to do with Pelic in particular. Uh, but let's just say I drop him down to the AHL for the moment just to see what that team would look like without, uh, or just see what that team would look like with him. And then NHL-wise, boy, I don't know. I mean, so three, four, five, six. That's our top six. Seven, eight, nine. With Faraby, and 10, 11, I mean, yeah, we only need one more guy. It's just who would we get rid of? It's got to be one of the 79s, you would expect. Maybe one of the 80s. We know Frederick's good enough for a third-line role. Faraby should be good enough for a third-line role. Kaliev has made the team, and I'm not sending him back down. There's no way. Uh, so we have Rintoul, who has a gigantic offensive awareness category or attribute, but the rest of the stats aren't quite there. It's between Rintoul, Norris, and Bertuzzi. Uh, Bertuzzi offensively really struggles. He has a good shot and he's fast. His defense is okay. Whereas, I mean, Norris has the better puck skills, the better offensive awareness. The better shot goes to Bertuzzi, the better defense. It's about even, really. Might be slightly better to Bertuzzi. He's a better skater and Norris is faster. I'm not really sold on either of them, to be honest. And I'm not really sold on Rintoul. I mean, he, he might not be terrible, but yeah, I'm not really sold on Norris or Bertuzzi for that matter. Um, I don't really want to call up any of the guys that we just signed. But what about Yandel and Hines? So Yandel is also you know, relatively well-rounded. And then Hines also has that ridiculous offensive awareness. I wonder. Let me just see what this would look like. Uh, we would be... Oh, wow, we'd be under the cap if I were to do this. Damn, I, I just realized how much cap space we have. Shit. Well, then let's just say for the hell of it. Okay, you know what? Here, I have to go sign somebody, actually. I didn't expect this to be an issue. Um, you know what? Screw it. Whatever. I'm tempted to call up Hines, but regardless, you can kind of get a look at what the team's going to look like. 
So offensively, actually, I want to look at the defense first. We actually do have that proper lefty-righty dynamic. So again, it'd probably be Hughes and uh, Reimer, Wierenski, McAvoy. We could split them up a little bit. Gildan and Ernie, which is pretty good, really. It's still decent. Offensively, at this point, I think we'd have to split up Hughes and Middlestot just to spread that wealth a little bit. Uh, Parks, though, has to be third line. Do we have anybody else just kind of playing out of their depth? Frederick is actually a depth forward. Farabee's a fourth liner. Right. You know what? That could work, though. Would I, want, would I rather call it Parks at Greenway? Parks is a good shot. Low elite potential as well, but I really do like Greenway. Let's just say we were to go with Parks. So I'd probably go... Oh, that's actually a tough one. Because we kind of want Kachuk and Wallstrom on different lines to be potential goal scorers. And I'd want Paling to be the third line center. So let's just say, and again, it sucks because I want Hughes on that top line. In fairness, he still could be. But we know Paling is not really a point producer. We could give him a chance to be, I suppose. Maybe go Paling, you know, middle stop Paling Park still isn't bad for centers. I think you can kind of get a look at what our options are shaping up to be, right? The top nine is not going to be great, but it's certainly not going to be terrible either. Uh, the bottom six is just how we want to craft that. If we still want to try to hold true to the two skill, one defensive, and one grind line. But we have options without making really any trades right now. And again, I really want Kaliev to be in the lineup. Uh, third line at the very least, even though he's listed as a fourth liner. He's not really that aggressive. And then down in the AHL, I still have to sign a couple of players. And actually, I need to go sign those two 20-year-olds. Uh, the medium top nine potential guys. Let me do that before I forget. Again, I'll take another look at what the AHL lineup setting up to be. But I think, I think again that we're not in an awful spot. I still don't know if I'm expecting any success with this team, but that might be the worst spot that we could be in. And also, what the hell do we do with Redmond? Just leave him unsigned for this year? Uh, that could actually be the worst spot that we could find ourselves in, where we are just in that state of limbo. Of not good enough to compete, but not bad enough to end up with top spots in the draft routinely. That is a rough spot to be in. Uh, we are the Anaheim Ducks. <laughs> Sorry to the Ducks fans, but hey, that was the that was the comparison that came to mind, and I'll be damned if it's not accurate. Uh, so we know that we want to sign Percy Plekanov's not a factor, or we want to you know bring him into the lineup. Shovel Dave, of course, also needs to be in the lineup. Is there a left wing? Yes, there is. There's Watt. Okay, so Shovel Dave, I'll take you out. And uh, Meskinen obviously is not ours, so let's go over to left wings. And with that, I mean, the AHL lineup is set. It's a good mix of our prospects and the veterans that we signed to just bolster up the team a little bit. And if I prioritize said prospects. I don't know. Some people argue whether or not you know, giving them that prime time, ice time really matters. But I think if we were to do it that way, uh, Novak, who would I drop for you? Uh, probably Altshuler. Yeah, bump up Shovel Dave. Hines, though, is a 78. I'd still drop him, though, based on the potential. Uh, so Novak, we'd actually bump up Percy. And then Watt would get to play probably, yeah, yeah, with any of those combinations. It's not bad, right? It's not bad. And then the defense as well, I still feel like we're going to have to make changes, actually. Uh, guys like Samuelson and Martin might not be long for this team. Benton Moss as well, uh, now that I look at it. Uh, Keandre Miller, he's 24, so he's at least more ideal. But Murphy is the better guy to bring in. Martin at 25. Again, Miller was 24. Blunden's 20. He needs to get into the lineup. Which means Samuelson is the next oldest at 24. We actually have a good amount of depth here. Valisi needs to get into the lineup as well. So we have to flip somebody as it is. It might make sense to play Pelic at the NHL level. And that way we get Valesi into the lineup and we don't have to get rid of anybody. Whew. As it turns out, we did not need to sign anybody. At least defensively, we didn't need that depth because this team is already looking pretty damn good in terms of defensive depth. So while I don't believe that they're going to have much value 
Uh, guys like Miller, Moss, Martin, Samuelson, we can look to flip them. And uh, Max Gilden as well. I think we flip him. We try to see if we can get some draft picks, maybe a little bit of forward depth out of it. Uh, not even necessarily players for the NHL roster now, but we try to, again, scout out, see if there are any forward prospects that are worth getting. So overall, the strategy of just saying, screw it, let's blow it up and just move on from a random point, which is what we're doing, it's it's put us into a pretty damn good position. We have all the cap room in the world. We have quite a bit of depth that we can work with. Redmond's coming up through the system. And then draft pick-wise, yeah, we're looking all right. <laughs> we are looking okay draft pick-wise. So I want to know what you guys think in terms of kind of what I laid out there. I really like the idea of going forward with the defenseman like that. It's just forward-wise, do we look to bring in somebody else? Do we just play the guys who have the best chance to develop at the NHL level? What do you think that we do from there? But overall, I thought I was going to hate the way this team looked. I have a little bit of optimism again. Not for this next season. I'm not going into the next season you know, thinking that we're cup contenders. But we're not in a terrible spot. In terms of early top 10 projections, Noah Erskine's up there. Anybody else? Cairns is a projected first round pick. Of course, that could change. Seagal or Siegel is up there. Ben DeHaan as a goaltender. England as well. Okay, so there, there are some Americans in the first round. We might have to make some moves. But overall, we could end up finding some relatively decent players. I don't know. I think maybe we... We pulled the trigger on the madness at the right time, and we may have found ourselves to be in a pretty good spot. So with that said, we're going to end things for now. I want to know your opinion. I want your feedback on what you think we should do as far as some of the little micromanaging decisions that we have to make. In the next episode, we get the roster uh, set, and we begin the season sim. So with that, I thank you for joining me. Happy birthday, America. And if you love America, like, comment, subscribe, and click the notification bell. Also, links are in the description of my Twitter and Twitch. If you don't love America, then happy Wednesday to you. But if you don't love America, like, comment, subscribe, notification bell, links in the description of my Twitter and Twitch. Until next time, have a good one. Eat some food. Fireworks, just not near my house because Emmy doesn't like fireworks. Don't scare my dog. I'll have to hit you. I just threatened physical violence to an audience of potentially 8,000 people. So, you know, I'll see you guys once the prison sentence is over. Going to jail for a long time. I just threatened 8,000 people individually, mind you, and as a collective. I think that's that's doubling up on the charges. I am in trouble. Thank you guys for watching. I am Jailbird24. Goodbye for now.